So I've aged the beef for 40 days. I've put it into my fridge at the beginning of January and now it's mid-Feb and it's time for the beef to come out. I can't believe I've done it. I can't believe that I took half a cow, put it into a fridge in my studio and aged it for a little over a month. And just, just look. Just look at this. Just look, it looks like oak. It looks like flipping oak. Right, let's butcher it up. So this is the roasting. We've got the ribs and the loin attached. Let me turn it around so you can see. So basically, where you start really is this bit here where it, the meat curves in and becomes straight. It's at this point here where we've got our T-bones or our porterhouses. This is our sirloins, these are our ribeyes, and that is the rump. This is where we start. So, you need a couple of things. You need to make sure that you've got a steel, you need to have a nice, sharp, large knife. A sabre is really good, or this kitchen knife. You need to have a, a boner, a butcher knife. And that's a really small, strong knife to be able to cut through and along the bone. And then we're gonna need a saw to cut through the bone. Right, let's take off the rump. Once you've gone through all the meat, you hit the bone, move to the saw. Take your saw, angle it up, bring it to the end of the table, and then it's like this. Nice movement to cut all the way through. Nearly three. There we go. Just look at that, man. Just look at that. That is a T-bone. That is a porterhouse. How good does the meat look? Oh, I'm so proud of it. What butchers do is then they take their knife to scrape the bits off the meat. What they're doing is, is that they're taking off some of the bone marrow. As you cut through the bone, the bone marrow is dispersed and it's just kind of smearing the meat. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm just going to scrape it so it's nice and clean. Right, now I'm going to rattle through that and get out all my T-bones or porterhouses. Just come and have a quick look, but as you can see, you can see that I'm cutting through the fillet. And this bone that comes through here is the rib cage, and this is inside the fillet. This is the sirloin. I'm just gonna cut those out now. I tell you what, I had no idea it was how physical breaking a carcass down. And I'm gonna have to have a cup of tea in a minute, because it's bloody hard work. Whew, that does look amazing, doesn't it? Just look at that! I did that! That's my food busker T-bone! Okay, now we've got to the last T-bone. You can tell that it's the last T-bone because you've got less fillet. You start encountering the bone sort of here. And that means that you've finished with the T-bones and you've got to the sirloins. So this is the last T-bone. So now we get to the sirloins, what we're going to do is we're going to take those off the bone by running the knife along the back of the rib cage. Welcome to the ribeye. Wow. Like, I'm genuinely speechless. Look at the amount of, of space that came out of that roasting. And it's, I think for me, the most rewarding thing is seeing this hunk of beef that is just like hanging out there, thinking, oh God, is it gonna turn into what I know a sirloin looks like or a ribeye? There's always been this gap between what I knew and, and what I saw. Right, next up, I need to cook one of these steaks and see what they taste like. Right, let's get the barbie on. So what I'm doing is, is I'm turning it, dropping the lid on, keeping the heat in. Taking it off, turning it, dropping the lid back on. I'm also throwing down these barbecue moves that you've never seen before. Okay. It's off, and now I'm gonna let it rest for eight minutes. Okay. <laughs> My first taste of the meat.
Oh, that's good. Mmm. It's so good. Oh, mate, just caramelization heaven. Oh. Oh, God, I hope the lads enjoy it tomorrow. I am nervous. Like, this is Peter Hannon, the most important butcher in the world. And Richard Turner, the guy that is behind so many successful meat restaurants like PitQ, Hawksmoor, and like Meatopia. Oh, and it's so easy to mess a steak up if you don't do it right. It is bloody delicious, huh? Okay, big days tomorrow. I better get ready. Morning. Nice to see you, thanks for coming down. Right. Um, Have you already tasted it? No. 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 Have you? No. Yeah. You're the first people, so you might die. No, I'm really joking. No. It smells good. Yeah, it does smell good. Oh, he's doing a little fan there. Yes, yes, yes. No. Nice. Okay, gents. Go for it. What are we going first? So I will say, yeah, we'll go for the better sirloin first. So, first off, texture's good. I'm going to wait for the uh, the maestro to speak before I say anything. <laughs> it's remarkably good, isn't it? That but it's good. It's very good. Aye, I think... Yeah, you're, you're well good. pleased with that, John. It's not bad, is it? It's okay. It's like it's it's outstanding. It's a lot more than okay. Mm. Yeah, you've done a good job. Well done. Do you know? What? <laughs> Round of applause. Do you know what? We get people that think that that overly aged, funky flavour is what they're looking for in beef. Yes. If you haven't got that here, it's, it's, it's a good thing. Yes. Because um, that masks inferior beef. Yes. Whereas what you've done here is just. Get, just improve the good product already by aging it. The whole thing about aging beef is that if it's done properly, is you concentrate the flavor. To be able to do that without letting, as Richard said, the funky element yes. become involved in one thing, which you've done here um, remarkably well, John, I'd say that's absolutely on point. That doesn't need another week. It's just absolutely, um, absolutely spot on. And I tip my hat to you. Mm. Well, it's probably the best piece of beef I've ever cooked. Oh, that couldn't have gone any better, could it? It's like Richard Turner and Peter Hannon were delighted and blown away with my beef. I just want to say thank you to you guys because it's like I can't do this, I couldn't go on this journey, I couldn't share this whole experience if it wasn't for the fact that you guys come along for the ride, that you watch the videos and you subscribe to the channel. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and thank you, thank you, thank you, man. It's like, this has been the wickedest thing that I've ever done. If you're gonna eat beef, eat the good stuff. Now, if you wanna try my beef, then go over to foodbusker.com and get involved, people. All the steaks are up there. There's plenty for everyone. Just get on there, get an order in, cook the beef, and then send me a picture on Instagram or on YouTube uh, community and share what you think of this beef because I'll be quite honest, I'm so proud of it and I just know you're gonna love it. And two of the most important guys in beef just loved it. Oh, it feels so good. Increase the peace, spread the love, and subscribe to the channel.